Hippocrates, the father of medicine, 400 years BC, no mention of diabetes in his writings. So diabetes is a fairly modern disease. Diabetes is a lifestyle disease. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. Why isn't the pancreas working? That's what we should be asking. As Proverbs 26 verse 2 states, the curse causeless shall not come. There is a reason. There is a reason why pancreases are not working. Now the pancreases, one of its main roles is to release two hormones. One is insulin, that gets the blood sugar down. The other hormone is glucagon, and that gets the blood sugar level up. Now, the meal that you had tonight, because it's high in fiber, I think everything had fiber, generous proteins, there's your legumes and some great fats, it gives a slow, sure, steady release of glucose, of nutrients. And that allows the pancreas to just release the insulin as it's needed. That's what every cell in the body wants, and that's what our pancreas wants. But what's happening today is people predominantly are eating a high carbohydrate diet. And this high carbohydrate diet releases a lot of glucose. And that glucose, when it gets into the blood, especially the refined sugar, and by the way, the refined grains, it's almost as high as sugar. But there is one grain that gets the blood sugar levels higher than refined sugar. Is that a surprise? And the grain that does that is what? Bread and cereal and pasta and cakes, etc., and pizza are all made out of predominantly one grain. What's that one grain? It's wheat. Now, in the 1950s, wheat went through intensive crossbreeding. And the reason they put it through intensive crossbreeding is they wanted to create a plant with a high yield of grain so that that would help with the starvation crisis in Africa, in Mexico, in India. And eventually, Dr. Norman Bullag got a Nobel Prize for his hybridized wheat. At first, the stalk broke before the grain was fully ripe because wheat used to grow that high. Do you remember that? <laughs> we had a 25-year-old wheat farmer come to our retreat. He'd never heard of such a thing. He didn't know that wheat used to grow that high. And so they went back to the drawing board and they came up with a wheat that only grows this high. I was in Holland, well, probably a month ago now, and we're driving along, you know, it's very, very flat. And I saw big fields of uh, sandy colored grass. I said, what is it? It's everywhere. They said, it's wheat. It was only that high. So it had only to be that high with a thick stem because some wheats are producing eight to ten times the grain that they originally, that they originally produced. So in the 1970s, the, the wheat started to go worldwide. So by the 1990s, every bread, cereal, pasta, cake, etc., pizza, all made out of this hybridized wheat. It was rushed through with no safety studies. They didn't think they had to do safety studies on wheat. It was rushed through with no safety studies. It rushed through with no safety studies. And who's it experimented on? I'm not interested in being experimented on. I'm interested in experimenting whether exercise works. I'm interested in experimenting whether drinking more water works or going to bed earlier works because if it doesn't work, I've lost nothing. They're the only things I'm interested in experimenting on. <clears throat> but I've found that they work. But what... what 
it produced, and they're starting to realise this only now, what it produced was a type of such starch structure that gets the blood sugar level up higher than even sugar. So the starch structure that was created is called amylopectin A. And amylopectin A is the name of the starch that was produced. So let's look at what it does. <clears throat> we'll do it up here. It gets the blood sugar level up very high, very fast. So then you get a corresponding dump. So that's the A. So let me give you something to compare it to, amylopectin B. Amylopectin B is found in bananas and potatoes. And if you're familiar with the glycemic index of food, bananas and potatoes, they're high on the glycemic index. So they get the blood sugar level up relatively high, relatively fast. Not as high and not as fast, so it's more like that. So that's your B. Amylopectin C is found in all your beans. There's your lentils, chickpeas, lima beans, cannelloni beans, kidney beans. So what does the C do? The C gives a lovely steady rise, maintenance, lovely steady drop. That's what every cell in the body wants. So let's have a look at it on the glycemic index. Now the glycemic index is a very important index for diabetics because the glycemic index is an index or a reading on how quickly the glucose in that food is released into the blood. So your baseline is 55. So <clears throat> all your berries, all your berries sit at about 26. Grapefruit, it sits at uh, 25. So for the diabetic, these, these are good fruits. <laughs> because they're low GI. They're a lovely, slower delivery of fuel. Whereas bananas, they sit up here somewhere. So where does sugar sit? Sugar sits at uh, 59. Where does um, white, white bread, white pasta, white cereal, it sits at 69 because of the amylopectin starch in it. What about whole wheat? Whole wheat, whole wheat bread, whole wheat cereal, it sits at 72. Hmm. How could that be? Well, because the whole wheat isn't refined, it's got more amylopectin A in it. And it's the amylopectin A that gets the blood sugar level up. Now, absolutely, whole wheat bread is superior to white because it's got fibre, it's got your B vitamins. But in regard to the diabetic who's watching their blood glucose levels, they need to eliminate wheat totally. I had one lady start to cry when she saw this. I said, why are you crying? She said, I'm a diabetic. I'm type 2 diabetic. She said, I was diagnosed two years ago. I do everything they tell me. I eat whole meal bread, whole meal pasta, whole meal cereal. And she said, and every six months I go to the doctor and he puts me on more insulin. She said, I'm not like the lady down the road. She just eats cakes and candies. And... But I don't do that. She said, I'm crying because I've been so frustrated but I have not known what to do. So why aren't the nutritionists told this? How much wheat does America grow? Acres of it. How much wheat does Australia grow? A lot. So it's big industry. So it's not an easy thing to change. And the farmers love the hybridized wheat. They've got to pay their bills. 10 times more grain per acre, that's 10 times more dollars per acre. So you see the problem. So no wonder diabetes has skyrocketed. It's not just the sugar, it's also the wheat.